Hi everybody, welcome to another week of Makers Monday. I am Anastasia Radloff, AKA Stamp and Blondie, and welcome to your weekly step-by-step -step crafting event. I hope you all are having a great week. I'm here decked out in my Christmas attire because today is our final day in my Christmas crafting series. So for the past about four weeks, we've been making Christmas projects step-by-step, -step, getting ready for the holidays. Now, let me just jump on Facebook here to make sure that I'm live. Looks like I'm good to go. If you are joining me live here on Facebook, make sure to comment, say hi. Let me know where you're joining me from. If you're watching this via replay on my YouTube page or here on Facebook, make sure to comment replay so that I know that you were able to join me this week. So, hi Becky, thanks for joining. I'm really excited to have you here today. I am gonna be creating for you two projects today that are perfect for stuffing your stockings. We're gonna be making two 3D projects. Now these are smaller projects, so they're perfect to fit into stockings. And one is even gonna be great for a variety of presents that you can fit inside. So, like I said, I have my little Christmas hat on, my Santa earrings, and I'm all ready to go. Uh, this past weekend started the kickoff of all of my holiday parties that I have to go to. I've got one today, one tomorrow, one Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just basically one every day until Christmas. And I even have one next week as well. So it's definitely uh, Christmas crunch time in the Radloff house. Now, just as a fun fact, I have not done my Christmas cards yet. So that needs to get added to the list too. So it is pretty crazy around here this time of year. All right, like I mentioned today, we're gonna create two projects featuring Stuff Your Stockings. Now these are quick and simple projects that you can easily mass produce if you want to share them with coworkers, friends, or just anybody that you meet day to day, or you can use them in your family stockings and they are great. So I am really excited about these projects. I always, usually in the past every year, I've done a class called Stuff Your Stocking, but unfortunately I feel like the time in between Thanksgiving and Christmas this year, just like there was no time. I feel like it was shorter for some reason this year, but I um, normally do a Stuff Your Stocking class in person, but today we're gonna bring it to Makers Monday. So no matter where you live, you can still enjoy my Stuff Your Stocking class. All right, let's go ahead and switch the camera here. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Let's see, hold on just a second. There we go. You think by now I would have that down. <laughs> okay, the first thing we are gonna go over is my December card class to go featuring the sweet ice cream stamp set. Today is the final day to RSVP for this class. Now this is featuring the sweet ice cream stamp set from the annual catalog. And you can also add on the stamp set and the coordinating punch to go with these projects. Now in this class, you'll create four different projects, two different or two designs of each one. So eight total cards to go over the class. So here are two of the projects that you will be creating. These are fun and fancy fold projects. So this one has, I've been using this fold a lot lately and I really love it. So it has like a fold out and another fold out. So this is one of my projects from that. And then this one is kind of like a booklet, but we're gonna make it like this. So you can leave it open or you can kind of glue it down and have it open this way. Unfortunately, the rhinestones are currently on non-orderable status, so I will be substituting another embellishment that coordinates with this package in your class kit. So the details say that rhinestones are included. Unfortunately, they are on back order until the end of the month, so these will be um, swapped out for another embellishment in your class kit. You get a full package of the 2022 in color um, designer series paper. This has Magenta Madness, Bumblebee, Just Jade, Misty Moonlight, and Cinnamon Cider, which Cinnamon Cider is perfect for creating ice cream cones. So a great color choice for there. And then you also get a package of the Shimmery Crystal Effects. 
So this, we used this uh, last week, two weeks ago in our Makers Monday projects, and we did this really fun um, glaze look. So once it dries, it looks clear on top. So this will make your ice cream cones and your popsicles just kind of pop with that glaze look on top of there. So the deadline to register for this is today. If you're interested in signing up, the details will be posted in a link to the video in the video description after I'm done here today. And then you can register to join us. Now this is a to go class. So it is um, features a product PDF and a video tutorial. So you can create the projects on your own time. There's not actually a set class time. So you can work on them after Christmas because they will be shipping after Christmas and you can create these as your schedule allows. All right, next up is the January through June mini catalog and celebration. I have my catalogs in hand. I am excited to start putting those together and getting them out to everybody. If you are not currently working with a demonstrator and you haven't placed an order with me in the last six months, you are, um, not on my list to receive one. So if you aren't working with a demonstrator, at the end of this video, in the description, there will be a link to reserve your free copies. Now these kick off January 4th, and the mini catalog runs until June. Celebration is until February 28th. If you aren't too familiar with what Celebration it is, um, it is Stanbump's biggest promotion that we run two times a year. So for every $50 you spend, you get to choose a fun little product out of this catalog. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you guys the insides of the catalog online until January 4th, but I can show you the front and back cover. So look at this really fun windmill. I am excited about that. And then these Tulip Designer Series paper that coordinates and dies with that stamp set. Now, celebration. Um, this little mini catalog, if you request a catalog, you'll receive both. So um, these will kick off together January 4th. Again, if you haven't placed an order within the last six months for me and you're not currently working with another demonstrator, feel free to click the link in the description of this video once I'm done here today to request your own catalog. Now, I did wanna share one thing. So I'm allowed to share products that I have in hand and projects that I've made with those products. So the first First is this in the moment stamp set. I love this one because there are so many possibilities with these images to really bring them alive with stampin' blends and watercolor pencils and just really bring out the color in them. Plus, if you follow my videos, you know that I love a good stamp set that has not only images, but sentiments along with it. So we have some great sentiments, and I feel like this lady is on a cruise. Like, you don't know where she's looking at, but I feel like this is a cruise. Maybe because I really need to go on a cruise or any vacation right now. <laughs> but the In The Moment stamp set, I created this really pretty card. Now this Feature stamp and blends to really bring that image to life. And um, with the postage uh, stamp punch, you can actually punch out your sentiment and pop it up with stamp and dimensionals. So a really, really easy project to create. This is actually new designer series paper as well. So very easy to mass produce, to have birthday cards for the year ready to go. All you have to do is color. And this is a great great uh, layout and stamp set and actually project for beginner stampers as well. So in the moment stamp set coming in the January through June mini catalog. All right, yes, we need Andy to sing the celebration song again. Oh, he is not home right now, he's still at work, but yes, he, I'm sure will pop in during celebration to sing the celebration song to all of you ladies uh, later in January. All right, our two projects. Oh, first, Prize Patrol. So each week I do something called Prize Patrol. And uh, last week our projects were um, 3D projects as well. And the prize for last week was the Whimsical Trees Stamp Set and Coordinating Christmas Trees Dies. Now, fun fact, this is sold out from our catalog, so it will not be brought back. You cannot buy this right now. Uh, the Whimsical Trees Stamp Set 
and coordinating Christmas tree dies. Our winner for last week's prize patrol is actually watching. I saw her comment come through. Uh, Veronica, congratulations. If you have this already, you can gift it to somebody else. If you don't, feel free to create some great Christmas projects with the whimsical tree stamp set and the coordinating Christmas trees dies because you are last week's prize patrol winner. Now, all you have to do to enter into Prize Patrol is share this video and comment that you shared. Now, sometimes Facebook is a little wonky and doesn't always let me know who has shared based on your security settings. So make sure that you comment shared after you did so that I know that you shared this video. Now, our Prize Patrol this week is the Delivering Cheer stamp set. This was highlighted in my November class kit and it is a really, really fun uh, stamp set to work with as well. This is a photopolymer stamp set completely see-through and clear so you can see exactly where you're stamping and it's a two-step stamp. Stamp. <laughs> so you have the bottoms here and then the top where she holds items. Again, great sentiment stamp set and image stamp set paired together and another set that you can really bring to life with stamp and blends and uh, watercolor pencils. We used them with watercolor pencils last month. So all you have to do is enter Enterprise Patrol by sharing this video and that's it. And I saw Veronica comment that you don't have that set. So I'm so happy that you're receiving the Whimsical Trees bundle. All right, our two projects today. They are right here. So the first one is this really cute penguin box. Now, I if you went to my website, stampandblondie.com today, this morning, you already know what's in this box but I did not show what is in the box on my newsletter or my teaser photos here on Facebook. So I wanted, I saw these at the store and I, I'm actually not a fan of these, but I saw them and I was like, I need to buy these and create a little box for them to go in. So this features the Penguin Playmates stamp set and the Expressions in Ink Designer series paper. So this is actually not Christmas paper at all. So I wanted to show you that you could actually use some of our designer series paper for other intentions. So this easily becomes a Christmas paper when you pair it with, if I can get it open, a Hostess Pink Snowball. <laughs> These little coconut, cakes so i'm not a big fan of coconut but as soon as i saw the pink on the uh the store shelf i was like oh i have to make something featuring this little pink cake so this is perfect and it's a little squishy but this box you can easily fill with other goodies and it's the perfect size for putting in a stocking and if it's these little hostess cakes. So this is what we are going to create with the little Penguin Playmates stamp set. And it's a really, really easy box to put together too. You don't have to be an advanced stamper to put this together, very simple. All right, the second project that we're gonna make, I'm, I gotta be careful because I redesign this after I made my first one because these were kind of falling out. So we're gonna make it a little tighter. This is a Hershey Kiss Christmas tree. Very simple to create. And you can even wrap these in a little cellophane bag and you can share this with others. Now, Carol, I saw you ask if anybody else keeps freezing. I have my laptop off to the side and yes, mine is freezing. It's probably my internet, but you know, nobody else is at home. So I know it's the not the dogs, but I have three devices going at the same time. So it's probably sucking all my internet up right now. But this little Christmas tree, you can wrap in a cellophane bag if you don't want the Hershey Kisses to fall out. And then you can gift this to others just to kind of step it up a bit. But I wanted to show you what it looks like without the bag so that you can make these. And these are like perfect uh, Christmas place settings for your dinner table. All right, the first thing we're gonna make though is this little penguin box. So this features the artistic or expressions in ink specialty designer series paper. It's a 12 by 12 designer series paper and it's special because it has gold foiling throughout the paper. So we have now each week I provide a project PDF on my website stampandblondie.com. Now this was a very easy one to type up 
this week um, because we are using a lot of measurements, but we are going to, um, there's not a lot of products that we're using on these two. So these are really, really simple. The project PDF has all of the item names, item numbers, prices, and the dimensions for the projects we're going to be creating here today. Now, if your um, video keeps cutting in and out, this is all being recorded at the same time. So you can always come back later and watch the recorded version. Um, so hopefully it's not cutting in and out too bad for you guys there. Now this project PDF, free on my website, stampandblondie.com, first post that's up there today. And you can pair this project PDF with this video to create our projects here today. Okay, for this, we are gonna be using two pieces of paper. We have a piece of polished pink cardstock. This is cut to eight by eight. And then the piece of the um, Expressions and Ink Designer Series paper, eight by eight again. So same sizes. Now we're gonna need two different scoring tools for these here today. The first one is gonna be our stamp and trimmer. Now, I am using the Stampin' Trimmer for this one part because we need to cut at 15 sixteenths. So actually not cut, score at 15 sixteenths. So because our scoreboard our, that I'm gonna use on my second piece of paper does not go to sixteenths, we have to use our paper trimmer to score this. Now I take my trimmer scoring tool. Now it comes with a score blade and a cutting blade. I take my score blade off because I always run the risk of cutting when I'm supposed to be scoring. So instead we're just going to move that up and we're going to use our stylus tool from our scoreboard which we will use in a minute. On our piece of expressions and in ink uh, specialty designer series paper we are going to score this at on the back side at 1 and 15 sixteenths. Now, if you're not sure with what that is, this little um, board here, your trimmer, has little dash lines. So the line right before two inches is 15 sixteenths. So you may need to uh, count them all just to make sure you're at the right spot. But I'm going to take the big end of my paper score here, line up my paper to 15 sixteenths and I'm just going to use my track cutting track to score. Now I would have used my um, score blade as well but like I said I run the risk of cutting when I should be scoring but also I tried to find it yesterday and I couldn't. So I'm not exactly sure where that little blade went but that's okay. I will just make sure everything is lined up here to score. All right, so we're gonna move that off to the side because we don't need our trimmer anymore. And on our piece of polished pink cardstock, we are going to bring in our scoreboard and we're gonna score this at every two inches. So that's very, very easy to do on here. The scoreboard has a number line here for two inches. So on all four sides, we're gonna score at two inches here. There we go. And then we just put this back. If you make a lot of 3D boxes and bags, um, the scoreboard is great because simply score tool because you can easily score a lot of projects. All right, with our bone folder, we're gonna crisp up our lines here. We're gonna fold everything in. So in here, fold in here, and our last one in there. Now I'm gonna use the bigger scissors for this. And we're gonna take our scissors and on our score lines that are right here on the corner, so our first score line, we're gonna cut right up to the first score line. And we're just gonna make little tabs here. This will help our box fold together. And then we're gonna, just gonna cut a little angled piece off of here. And this will just kind of help it again tuck into each other. I didn't have a certain angle there. I just cut off 
a little bit of ends. Now we're gonna flip and do the same thing on the other side, cut all the way to that first score line. Cut all the way to the first score line and then cut again, a little tab to the first score line and just a little tab off there as well. So our base of our box is ready to go. Very easy to be able to create that base of your project. Now the same thing on the top, we're going to cut to our first score line, cut a little tab here, our first score line, cut a little tab, our score line, tab and our score line here just make little tabs very easy to create all those little tab pieces there move our pieces out of the way and we're going to use our bone folder now on this so because this is designer series paper you want to treat it a little more gentle it's not as thick as our cardstock so you just wanna make sure that you're not scoring too hard because if you do the creases in the designer series paper too deep, you run the risk of um, going too deep into your paper and then it can um, rip it. So you just wanna be careful with the designer series paper. It is not as thick as our cardstock. And fold, there we go. So our bottom and our topper. Now, if you are using the same designer series or cardstock for a bottom and a top, you just want to make sure that you remember to annotate which one is bottom and which one is top because they are scored at two different increments. You just want to make sure that your bottom is going to be the bottom and your top's your top. All right, I'm going to flip this over and we are going to use Stampin' Seal Plus. So Stampin' Seal Plus is a heavy duty adhesive. Now with this, you don't need to push very hard onto your paper. Too much pressure onto your paper can cause it to rip while you're using Stampin' Seal Plus. So just light pressure while you're using that. And then you're just gonna fold all your paper together so that your tabs go on the inside. Now with Stampin' Seal Plus, once it is um, adhered together, it is not coming back apart. So you want to make sure that everything is lined up exactly where you want it before pressing down because once it's closed and pushed together, it's not going to be coming back apart. So here is our little base of our box. Same thing on the top. Now this one you want to be very careful with because again, light adhesive, see, I'm not even barely pressing on this and it's tearing my paper. So little light adhesive, I'm gonna try stamp and seal on this one. That's a little better, there we go. Because seal plus is so sticky and adhesive, like, rips paper especially when it's thinner so it's it's great on cardstock but once you try to use it on designer series paper like this it can be pretty rough on it so we're just going to close everything up here making sure it's all tucked in where we want it so that when we close it it's all lined up here we go and here's our topper for our box so quick and easy and this is a perfect size for like if you're gifting jewelry it comes from the jewelers in that little hard box this will work perfectly for this as well all right the inside so let's open that back up now on the inside here I just have a piece of tissue paper that I actually cut in half because I didn't want my snowball to stick up too much but I wanted a little bit of the uh, tissue paper in there. So I just kind of folded it and tucked that in there. So our snowball will sit right there on the inside. Now our, let's get that out of 
the way. Our piece of designer series paper we are now going to decorate. So I have pre-cut from the layering circles dies a piece of polished pink cardstock and basic white cardstock as well. And we are going to use our regular stamp and seal to adhere these together. So that's gonna go right on top of there. Now I'll be using the Penguin Place stamp set from the Ju uh, July through December mini catalog. This will actually be carrying over so um, we can expect this to stick around just a little bit longer. It's a photo polymer stamp set completely see-through and clear so we can see exactly where we will be stamping here today. I have just a spare piece of basic white cardstock and we're gonna be using the Penguin Builder Punch. So you can build your own little penguin with this punch. I've got Tuxedo Black Memento ink for the body and we're gonna stamp that first. Now, because my punch has my main penguin body upside down, I'm gonna stamp my penguin upside down. So we're actually going to stamp it at the bottom of our cardstock here. So ink up our penguin and stamp him right there. He looks really cute in tuxedo black. We're going to stamp and see, I can flip this around until I'm ready to punch him out now. For his feet and beak, we're gonna use Daffodil Delight. And these are very small. I gotta bring this closer so I can see where I'm stamping. Sorry if it's out of view for a second there. So our beak and feet are in Daffodil Delight. There we go. Isn't he just so cute? He's so easy to put together too. And then the last bit, we're going to stamp in polished pink ink and we're gonna stamp his little scarf. So we've got our, and I'm actually gonna stamp the scarf down here or actually I'll do it right here because we're gonna fussy cut that out. There's no punch to go along with the scarf. All right, let's punch out our penguin. So this is why we stamped him upside down so he will easily fit into our penguin builder punch. If you have, if you guys got this penguin builder punch, let me know. I, it's been, it was on back order for a while and now it just came back in stock and it just, I think it sold out again already cause it's so popular, but I love this little penguin guy. All right, we're gonna glue that down right to our circle and we're gonna fussy cut out our scarf. Now I did not stamp my penguin right to the circle of that basic white because if I had messed up, then the whole circle would have been messed up. So instead I stamped it to an extra piece of paper and then I could easily just punch him out there. All right, Billy, you've got the penguin punch. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. It, I think when I did my pre-order as a demonstrator, it was one of the first things that I added to my pre-order because I knew it was gonna be popular and that I loved it. <laughs> All right, the scarf is very easy to cut out. It's just a bunch of little lines to cut. So that we are going to adhere with liquid glue. So it's very small and so tape runner or stamp and seal adhesive just won't fit in there. So our Tombow liquid glue is perfect for gluing that down and getting that on there. Yes, yeah, Di Denise, it was like, it sold out like right away again when, and I was, I had a feeling it was going to again. I have a customer that ordered it back in August and her should be here any day now to my house so I can give that to her, but it was quite a while that it was not orderable. Okay, our sentiment, the, oh, out of view. Be cool, be chill, be merry. I just stamped at the bottom of a scratch piece of paper and we're gonna fussy cut this out.
and I liked to flag the ends, or not flag, just uh, angle cut the ends here. And this we're going to adhere to our box, our penguin, just with liquid glue. It's gonna go in the bottom corner. Our sentiment is gonna go on with Stampin' Dimensionals. And my dimensionals are perfect because I can use this little outline piece of foam and it fits right in that spot. So don't throw away those outlines of your dimensionals because these little pieces fit perfect on thin sentiments. So we're going to pull this off. That's gonna go right on the front of our box. And also back in stock, which I was really excited to see, is this gold 3 eighths of an inch shimmer ribbon. This had been on back order for a while too. Of course, Stampin' Up! just like everywhere else in the whole world is getting, um, you know, shipping problems. So we finally got this back in stock and I was very excited about it. The shimmer ribbon goes perfect with the expressions and in ink. Uh, designer series paper. So we're gonna tie this in a bow. I did about uh, eight and a half, nine inches for my bow here. I did this a little longer because I want some tails on my ribbon. Normally I trim those up, oops, but I actually want some tails on my ribbon here today. We're gonna adhere this with glue dots. And with your take your pick tool, you can form a little ball in the back of your glue dot and place that right on your box. Now I like to take a couple more glue dots, keep them flat and put them on the back of the bow just to keep it down so it doesn't go flying around. And you can even add one, let's add one more to this here so that stays down. And that is our box topper. So very easy to be able to put this together and then it holds our Hostess Snowball. These come in um, a package of six and they're all individually wrapped, which is great. So you can create a little polished pink box which coordinates with the color of these snowballs. And then this box here fits, the topper fits right, if I can get it in there, there we go. And there is our little polished pink Hostess Snowball box. And our first project today for Makers Monday featuring stocking stuffer projects. So somebody asked where I got my glue dot holder at. Uh, I got this at my local hobby store. Um, these are actually Stampin' Up! glue dots. And uh, the company glue dot, they the way they wind their glue dots now is actually the reverse way. So I had to unwind the whole roll and roll it back up. But these are uh, Stampin' Up! glue dots in this little glue dot holder and it's, it's perfect. All right, so let me know what you guys think about this little box. It's quick and easy, fun to create, and these little snowballs are perfect for gifting. Um, so I am excited to gift this to somebody because I don't like snowballs, so somebody else can enjoy them. All right, our second project here today is this little Hershey Kiss tree. Now, like I said, I've, I'm holding it kind of so these little Hershey Kisses don't fall out. I redid this after I created my sample here. So the second one will be a little more tight to be able to hold these Hershey Kisses in. This is always a fan favorite when I do my Stuff Your Stocking class. So I thought I would bring it back out here for today. Now, don't forget the project PDF has all the dimensions on it of what we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna go a little quick through this cause we're gonna do a lot of scoring. And so all the dimensions are on the PDF so you can easily pair that with this video. Okay, we have, let me grab my paper here. We have three, four pieces of garden green cardstock. We have one at one inch by nine and three fourths, one at one by 11, one at one inch by seven inches and one at one inch by four inch. 
So if you didn't catch all that, remember it's on the project PDF. All right, the first one is our nine and three fourths. So our Harry Potter piece of garden green cardstock. We are gonna score this. This is where the scoreboard comes really in handy. We're gonna score at three, six and one eighth, and nine and one fourth. Three, six and one eighth, nine and three fourths. Now this is gonna be project number one. So, or piece number one. Piece number two, this is a one by 11. We're gonna score at every inch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, this is gonna be piece number two. Piece number three is our one inch by seven, and we're gonna score that at every inch mark. Piece number, that's piece number three. And then our last piece, one inch by four, same thing, one inch markings. All right, I'm gonna move our scoreboard off to the side. Okay, our first piece is our um, our tree outline. So this is the one that is one by nine and three fourths. So we're gonna use our bone folder. Bone folder is gonna really come in handy for this. And we are going to crisp up our lines and we're gonna glue this together. Now for this, I love to use Tombow liquid glue. It holds strong and it, um, while it does take a little bit to dry, it is perfect for really bonding those fibers together. So on your little tab for your piece here, we're just going to fold our tree together and then you just have to wait for those fibers to bond together. So if you don't have it exactly lined up, you can kind of shift and shimmy your paper, but this is gonna be the outline of our tree. Now that crease for me, I like to put it in the lower left because I want the topper of my tree and just the side to kind of all look really flush and not show that crease where it lined up together. So that's gonna be my lower left is where I glued those two pieces together. And I'm gonna put that off to the side. Next, we're gonna work with our piece that is one by 11. Now the best way that I found to remember how to fold this is you fold down twice, flip, fold down twice again, flip, fold down, flip. So you're just flipping back and forth, fold twice, flip, fold, fold. So it kind of gives this shape. Let me get it all here so you guys can see. It's kind of like a zigzaggy pattern there. And we're just gonna put that off to the side. This piece here, the one by four, we're gonna fold all in the same direction. We, we're gonna use our bone folder for this to crease our lines. And this is gonna go in the top of our tree. So we're just gonna form a little triangle and you can even glue this together. We're just gonna add a little bit of glue there. And that's gonna go right in the middle of the top, right in there. Now our one by seven piece is gonna be, I'm gonna lay this down even though all the Hershey Kisses are falling out. This one by seven piece, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna fold twice and flip, fold twice and flip, and then fold twice. And you can use your bone folder to really crease up those lines here. Now I made these for a craft fair. I didn't do any craft fairs this year, but I did them I made them for a craft fair two years ago because of course there really wasn't any last year. And I sold every single one. So they're very easy to mass produce. And if you do craft fairs, they are perfect for selling at craft fairs. All right, now this piece is gonna go. So we're gonna have the two triangles on the outside when it's kind of all scrunched together. That's gonna go right in the middle. I'm not gonna glue anything in there. And then this piece, we're going to scrunch up. So you've got your two triangles right side up on the end and that's gonna go 
tuck in right in here. Now it may look like, see, you can see it's kind of not all in place, but once you add your Hershey Kisses, it'll really tighten up and keep it all together. All right, Hershey Kisses. We love these. Now you can find the Christmas ones, the red and green. You can do the almond ones if you want the, I think they're uh, gold. You could do hugs, but Hershey Kisses, the regular ones never go out of style. All right, we're gonna start with our Hershey Kisses all facing the same direction first. So I'm gonna, all the ones that are right side up, I'm going to add, oh, that one's kind of coming apart. So this one, we're gonna enjoy a little piece of chocolate. All right. I mean, it's like one for the project, one for me. <laughs> All right. Our flag, we wanna make sure that it's kind of tucked behind. So we put that in there, tuck our flag behind, and then put our other Hershey Kiss in here. Another one, tuck the flag in down here at the bottom tuck the flag in and you can even kind of like fold the foil around the kisses tuck that in and one more here make sure the flags in the back and then right there now this is where it's tight it starts to tighten up so you want your Hershey kisses to all then go down and then this last one, you can see the paper is kind of sideways. This one is a little harder, so you have to kind of push that kiss off to the side. And there is our little Hershey Kisses tree. So you can see the difference. This like is bigger and it's kind of loose, so it didn't really work out. But this one, everything is tight in there. It's not coming out. Um, and this is the perfect way to do these little Hershey Kisses trees. Now, I have a little um, sneak peek of some new product from the upcoming January through June mini catalog. So this is the 3 8 inch faux linen ribbon and it is real red. This is actually on our Valentine's Day page. So, but real red goes with Christmas, so it's perfect. Now for this, I'm gonna measure this out. We need about 21, 22 inches of ribbon. So it's, it's a lot of ribbon, but if you do the cellophane bag route where you put this in the cellophane bag, then you can tie the bow at the top and you won't need as much. Also another little trick, if you have the Hershey Nuggets, so not the Hershey Miniatures, which are like the Mr. Good Bars and the, the, um, the Crackle. If you have the Hershey's um, Nuggets, that can be a little tree bottom. So you can create, wrap that in um, soft suede cardstock and then glue it to the bottom and you have a bottom to your tree. But that doesn't really work when you tie ribbon around the whole thing like we are gonna do right now. So if you wanna step up your Hershey trees, you can always add a Hershey nugget to the bottom and wrap it in soft suede or early espresso cardstock, and then it will be the trunk to your tree. All right, so here is our final product with the faux linen thread wrapped around the outside in real red. These are so cute and perfect for play settings at your holiday uh, dinner. So you can just put them there and everybody will love these little guys. Super easy to create and a perfect way to use up your scraps of garden green cardstock. All right, let's bring in our two projects that we created today. So we did our first little penguin box with the hostess snowball on the inside and the little Hershey kiss tree. Let me know which one is your favorite. I think because I am a pink lover, I have to say that I love the penguin, but these little Christmas trees with the Hershey kisses are perfect for gifting and you can easily tuck them into somebody's stocking as well. So let me know which one is your favorite here that we created today. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining me for my last week of my Christmas crafting series. Now we have one final Maker's Monday left for 2021. Can you believe it? 
I am super excited to bring you projects next week featuring brand new stuff from the January through June mini catalog. We are moving straight from Christmas into new. So I'm excited to show you guys new projects and new products that are coming to the catalog. As always, I hope you have a wonderful week and until next time, bye.